Welcome to the Chucky Podcast. My name is Sebastian. My name is Jose, guys. Today we have a guest. Oh, and I am... Your name is... Amin. Hey, Amin. I'm the nephew. Um, one of the nephews. So what's yeah. the... Tell us a little bit about... First, uh, what company you're representing today? What's your company? My company name is Nephews Towing okay. and Recovery. Family so business? It's a family business. Well, it's just me and Nephews Towing, but we come from... Uh, a big union of uh, tow- towing. Okay. The, the main one is affordable towing, which is my uncle's. Okay. And then you got States Cartage, and then you got me, okay. Nephew's Towing. And then we got, you know, uh, another one of our guys uh, works with us. You know, we give and take work with uh, Rivera. Okay. So each company is set in a different uh, city. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So what other cities are you, can you, are you available before we kick off, we have a lot of questions just to go through. But just since you mentioned it, what other cities are you present in? What other? Well, I'm present in Palos Hills because my hometown is where I live. And uh, I park my truck uh, pretty much a minute away from my house. Okay. Two-minute walking distance. And, then, and anything outside of Chicago? Uh, any other big? No, we're, because, we're, because mostly, anywhere, right? we're mostly south of Chicagoland. So uh, affordable towing is located in Crestwood. Illinois by uh, 138th in uh, Cicero. States Cartage is in uh, Country Club Hills by 175th in Cicero. And Romeo uh, Rivera is uh, in South Holland by 163rd in Halstead. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, so, I mean, thank I'm, you I'm for here coming. to represent them all. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Thank you for coming. I appreciate I, it. Thank uh, you. We definitely have a couple questions we want to dig into uh, today. and. I just want to make sure I keep looking. If we're recording, everything is fine. I want to make sure that we can, you know, provide some value for our listeners to, if somebody's interested, not only for you to share your your, your story and what you do and how you got got here, but also uh, if somebody's interested, how it looks when you know when you're trying to get to um, into the towing industry. Towing industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I could give some knowledge. So tell me. Um, Tell me about your rig really quick. We we did shoot a video and that video is available on our, on our channel. But tell me what do you what do you got here? What is this, the, the truck that we? So I consider this like a medium duty tow truck. It's not a full duty nor a heavy duty because there's you know obviously a lot bigger and they could do more work. This is like strictly towing. You know I could show up to recoveries, you know rolled over trucks with the family, you know, and uh, I could just be there to help or I could just tow it after they're done recovering it. So uh, this is more of a tight city area type of truck. Like if a truck is broke down in the middle of the city, mm-hmm. I that, go that for that because it all the tight turns and sometimes a truck has a, a, a trailer with it. And you know, you're talking about a really long, well, I call it a train on wheels, you know, because it's really long, you know. What's the length on that? Like, you know, with the 53 footer and- I never really uh, measured, but Probably like over a uh, little over a hundred feet. Yeah. yeah, about one hundred and ten feet, yeah, one hundred twenty yeah. feet. Pretty long, mm-hmm. and it's more of a uh, road truck. So if somebody breaks down in, an, in another state, I'm the best one to go out there because we keep our big trucks for the city for the recoveries, Cause accidents, rollovers. Somebody hit the bridge. You know, Chicago has a lot of low bridges, and a lot of guys. You know, for like from out of state, they kind of you know hit those bridges so yeah. that's why we keep our big trucks in in our medium duties out do you see a lot of uh, trucks you mentioned hitting bridges is that a, uh, an accident that you go to quite often how, how often yes. do you say i'll say like once a month or once every two months but there's always someone out there that's going to hit a bridge you know well, usually somebody out of state that doesn't know chicago, mostly out of state yeah. yeah most of the guys that work in chicago they know where the bridges are located and some of the bridges they're not even marked you know yeah yeah so True. and uh, it could be a 13 13 oh and some drivers think they can make it but they can't yeah. and they'll be flying <laughs> yeah. and once they hit that bridge a lot of things could happen they could either you know scrape off the top or they could break their trailer in half, depending on how heavy the load is. Yeah. And uh, most of the time, uh, the trailers are broken in half and loaded with whatever it could be. It's mostly refrigerated. Yeah. So it could be from uh, different kinds of meat. meat yeah. yeah. We had a few, uh, a few Pepsi loads, you know. Well, it's mostly meat. 
So tell me, going back to your truck, uh, Volvo, what year? It's a 06. 06 with an engine, what, what uh, do you D12. D12, right. Uh, 10 speed, right? Yes. Okay. And so just to go back, when you, w you were an owner operator, right? And you got Correct. into, um, we've mentioned briefly in our video that's, um, that you guys can uh, watch. Uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube, we're sitting in front of the rig. If you're listening, um, go check out the video. Uh, I mean, it has a really cool rig that you should uh, check out. But tell me you were an owner-operator uh, and give me a brief uh, kind of a story how you were like, okay, this is, this is what I'm going get to in, get into. Okay, well, this goes back to uh, family. See, my uh, family on my dad's side and my family on my mom's side are all truckers. So I was actually born into it. Like when I opened my eyes, there's tr just <laughs> trucks. Truck, yeah. And when I was a kid, I used to ride with my uncles a lot. And I actually enjoyed it. I wanted to go to school, but I'm like, you know, I don't think I'm that school type of guy. So trucking it is. And I, I actually liked it. At first, I didn't like it because I was on the road. And I was gone for like three months at a time. I used to live in my truck for a whole year. But... Then I got stressed out. I'm like, man, you know, one time I look, I look in the back, you know, I'm like, man, this is my house. I'm like, man, no, I don't want to do that. So that's where I, I quit the road and I started working local as a company driver for another year. And then I saved up some money through the whole year and I bought my own truck, which was really cheap, but I got my money back within a month. Like it took me a year to save up for that truck and I got it back within a month of becoming an oh. owner op. But that doesn't go for everybody, you know. It's just luck, and it's you got to know what you're doing and wh what you want to do with that truck. Do you want to do local, regional, over the road? It just depends. And I got a good lick on the truck because a guy had just ran out of business and he just got fed up. He had a bunch of trucks. He just wanted to sell them for whatever. And I got my truck for really cheap. So, and I and I worked with the company that he was working with. So it was pretty good. Uh, it was a pretty good start as an owner operator all on by myself, you know. So then what happened that you you were like, I don't know what, I'm going to go into uh, towing, I'm going to start towing. Well, I worked in the city uh, as an owner operator for several years, let's say about seven years. And I only worked with one company and I stayed with them for a very long time until uh, they slowly started running out of business. And uh, when they ran out of business, I was just, you know, I don't even know what I want to do now. So I went and I, uh, I signed up with another company doing the same kind of work for a fraction of what I used to get paid. And I used to used to do hazmat too, which is hazardous mm -hmm. materials. And uh, they didn't really offer hazardous materials at the other company because uh, I, I don't know why, but it wasn't really good. So that's when my uncle called me up. He's like, hey, you know, don't you want to get into towing now? Because he asked me a few times when I was doing uh, local work and I refused. Because, I refuse, because why, why did you refuse? Okay, well, because it doesn't have a schedule. Mm -hmm. And I was used to having a schedule throughout my life doing, you know, trucking. It was a nine-to-five job to me. But the company that I used to work for worked around the clock. They were 24-7. So I, I could pick and choose what time I want to go to work or if I want to work or not. Mm -hmm. It was like I wake up in the morning, shower, breakfast, I get in my truck, and then I call them up. Hey, I'm ready to work. What do you got? And then they'll offer me what they got on the table. That's how easy it was. And I loved it. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, with, with the towing industry, you got no schedule. Your schedule is not up to you. It's up to whoever breaks down at what time they break down. So when, I, when we used to chill with the family, you know, uh, by my uncles, I used to see we're, we're chilling, you know, about to have dinner, about to have a birthday party or, you know, a family gathering. They get a phone call. They have to leave. So they'll just leave us there. You know, and I'm like, man, I don't think I want to get into that. But then uh, when I signed up with that other company, I'm like, man, you know, I don't like this. I'm not making as much money as I used to. Well, let me give it a shot. Let me give towing a shot. So I called up my uncle. I'm like, you know what? Uh, as that offer still stands, I'm, I'm down. So I bought the machine from him, and uh, it actually costed me a lot, you know, a lot mm -hmm. than what I'm, what I'm able to, to pay. But I'm like, you know what? It's I, I gotta take a it's I gotta take I, yeah. take a risk, yeah. you know. I took the risk and it, it was okay, you know, especially with my uncle's help. Without my uncle's help, you know, it, it would have been a lot tougher. 
So that's yeah. how I uh, got into towing. You had a good mentor, your uncle, right? So yes. he guided you the right way, gave you some good tips. Yeah, I, uh, I learned a lot from them. And uh, I kind of had some knowledge already, yeah, but not driving. directly. It's not like he showed me, okay, this is how you do it, this is not, what not. But no, just from looking at him, how he does the job, I kind of caught it. So when I went into That's the truck, yeah, when I went to the towing industry, I already had some knowledge. But there's no limit to learning in towing because every day is a different challenge. Different scenario. Yeah. Every day you got something different. You know, a truck is New crumbled, truck or you know, a truck yeah. is crumbled in pieces from an accident. How are you going to tow it? So you just got to figure it out. Yeah. So you're learning as you go and it, there's no limit. A truck hit a, a bridge and tore his container in, in pieces. How are you going to do it? How are you going to strap it up? How are you going to make it safe for the road? So it's just, you know, as you go. You like the adrenaline? Is it like a really? Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Now I love towing, you know, it's just it's just a challenge for me i like challenges yeah. you know how am i gonna do this i show up at a scene and the people are looking at me like okay what is he gonna do I'm like man i got this <laughs> you know we'll take care of it there's nothing hard for us anymore you know every 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 start is tough every start you know until you know you'll get used to it you'll start knowing what to do so that's basically how, uh, so are, how you, are you are you happy with the move with the risk you took yes I am now, you know, because uh, getting into towing industry is not easy. Mm -hmm. You can't like just any like any business. Yeah, so you can't just go buy you know a hundred thousand dollar tow truck and start work. No, you need people. You need to know people. You need you know customers. You need a lot of customers to keep you rolling. Mm -hmm. You need uh, accounts. You know, like you for an example, your company Aero Transport is my one of my accounts. You know, I rely on you same way you rely on me. Yeah. So, and it doesn't come like, like that. Yeah. It came after a little while. It was while, a relationship you know? we worked on and you, the number one thing I s always tell, uh, you know, um, the value you bring to your customer is the, the most important thing because if you over um, deliver, it's always going to come back to you. Exactly. You've over delivered on everything we've used you for. Oh, okay. Uh, nephew stowing went and uh, actually didn't tow the truck. He actually fixed it and we came back. Right? That mm -hmm. goes a long way for me. And you know we have a decent uh, medium-sized fleet. Uh, you've maintained that relationship, right? I, we've both maintained maintain that relationship. And, and that's something that, you know, it, it could translate to pretty much any business. Like if, you know, if you under promise and over deliver is what I believe. And you've, I feel like you've delivered mm -hmm. on that. And yeah, I appreciate and it. You See, have affordable prices, which is, which is really good. And, and you're mm -hmm. always available to help out and come up with some creative solutions, which is, which absolutely. Is very if I arrive on a scene and uh, I could fix the truck, I will fix it rather than tow it because it will save the customer the money for the tow. And it would save me the time mm -hmm. I could be helping somebody else in that in that free time because we get a lot of stranded guys out there that really need my help yeah. so if the truck is fixable i'll fix it and i'm out you know what i'm saying yeah move ne move to the next project or go spend quality time with your kids or if you absolutely family right? i try as much as i can to spend time with the kids because i know in some days i don't see them i gotta be out there because you know people count on us yeah uh so tell me um what is the price point? I don't think we've mentioned that. Um, and you don't have to specifically tell me uh, what you paid for your setup, but the approximate cost, like the bracket, converting a truck, um, regular tractor trailer to a towing rig with the setup that you Okay, have. for a setup like mine would cost uh, between 65, between 60 and 65 grand for the whole setup to be 100% ready to tow a truck. You know, mm -hmm. you could do it for cheaper. Mm -hmm. You could do it for a lot cheaper. But the way I did it, it costed me a little more money, but I know that it's guaranteed. It's not going to give me any problems. You know, the, the steel that we put in there, the bolts, the welding, this, that, the front bumper itself, mm -hmm. you know, that took some time and that cost some money. Yeah. But I know when I get a call, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get the job done because it's you got good quality, it's yeah. a responsibility you know i don't want to go with a cheap tow truck and it's going to break down on me or it's not going to be as effective as this mm -hmm. you know it is a small tow truck it is a volvo but it gets the job done yeah 
mm-hmm. and it's tough you know yeah. d12 tough tough engine best engine ever yeah i could tell you it's not that fast on takeoff but when it takes off it gets a, it, it gets power, it done yeah. you know it got the power let's um i want to touch on a couple uh, questions what's the most um amount of what what types of trucks are you hauling the most i mean you know brands obviously the popular brands right what do you see that gets towed a lot okay i'll tell you 85 to 90 percent of my toes are volvos and cascadias evenly which so, would make sense as there's a lot of them yeah. on the road right the, what, what yeah type of it's not it doesn't mean that they break down a lot no it's because there's a lot of oh, them yeah. You know, like, let's say out of 10 Volvos, there's one Peterbilt, 10 Cascadias, there's one KW, for example. Mm-hmm. So on the other hand, if there was a lot of KWs or if a lot of uh, Peterbilt, they're going to break down uh, at the same amount. Well, on the road, the most of the trucks that you see are either a Volvo or a Cascadia, especially for local work. You know, a lot of guys, uh, they like these trucks are like volvos and cascadas or freight lines in chicago yeah, yeah. they yeah. they love them for uh for the local work you Did, know because so what type of common thread issues common issues you see is it because of trans went out or what is the okay uh the two common problems is either the region or the def system Emissions. yes and automatic transmission huh. yeah. so they didn't do their best on the automatic Mains. transmission so uh, when somebody tells me, you know, I got a Cascadia with uh, a transmission problem, right right away I'll know it's an automatic. So I'll ask him, yeah. automatic? He was like, yes, I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and, and a Volvo. So I would never, for my personal use, I would not get an automatic for multiple reasons, not mm-hmm. just because they break down too much. It's because it has control. I don't like the truck to have control. I want to have control. Mm-hmm. I've always sure. been on trans on. Uh, manual transmissions i've driven automatics i don't like it yeah. so it's not mine it's the trend and and the requirement that you know new drivers coming into the market very little um new drivers actually know how to shift and want to shift so that's why fleets are swapping to changing to automatic to automatic yeah. which is understandable uh, it's easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, we've done it. We we bought a lot of trucks. Yeah, I bought a lot of cost. trucks that mm-hmm. that you know have it does lower the maintenance cost. So you know, advantages and disadvantages, obviously, yes. But that's a good. That's that's something that mm-hmm. I wanted to know because you know emissions. We've been talking about emissions yeah, and that's and, a big and helping out drivers and and owners to understand what truck to buy and what what to stay away from. Right. So so uh, emissions, obviously. Uh, something that you tow a lot in yeah. automatic transmissions. Now, um, what what should I know if I if I'm calling a truck tow truck? What is it something that I should know? If you're pulling a what? If I'm if I'm calling a tow if I'm calling you for a service, right? I broke down on the road. What's some of the some of what are some of the things that a driver owner operator should know? Should know the first thing he should know or she or the the driver, the driver yeah. should know is where he's at a lot of guys call me they don't even know where they're at they're like okay i'm on route 83 southbound northbound <laughs> uh, well route 83 where it's like uh, i don't know but you got to always be pay attention to where you're at because you never know when you're going to break down and a lot of guys don't know how to share the location you know so i got to walk them through how to how to share their location so i can get to them you know so he'll tell me like i'm on uh the corner of you know Kilpatrick and uh, Route 60. Uh, what city? You know, I, I'm not gonna go yeah. to the map and just you know search for you. You have to tell me at least what city, what mile marker, what highway, and a lot of times it happens a lot of times where a truck will break down, and then the the driver would call a towing right away. They would call me, hey, you know my truck broke down. I don't even know what happened. And then while I'm on the way to pick the driver up. He finds the problem. It's probably like a fuse or a corroded wire. He found a problem. He fixed it, starts up his truck, drives off, forgets to call me. You oh, got to wow. remember to call me because so many times I got, I got to the scene and the guy's not there. Like, uh, where are you? And most of them don't even answer their phone. Like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. 
like it's you don't you don't have to feel shame okay your truck started give me a call hey cancel the service my truck started i'm like okay have a nice day yeah you know so i got a question for you amen mm -hmm. uh, i mean we I talked mean, about this i mean no i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um insurance wise mm -hmm. do you have to purchase some other like extra insurance to be towing a vehicle or i mean obviously the just say liability, liability insurance has coverage. to be a lot higher right well it's slightly higher because it's more than one vehicle because you're towing a vehicle a trailer and a load so a regular truck and a trailer's insurance is a little cheaper than mine because he's only t he's only insuring his truck his trailer and a load on the other hand for a tow truck driver I have to insure my vehicle plus yours plus the trailer and the load. load. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's slightly more. Well, I mean, what can I do? Yeah. Uh, I would say, do you think it's a good career for guys to get into, young drivers or somebody that doesn't want to be an owner operator or not the owner operator, but be in trucking hall of freight? Do you think it's a good, good industry to be in? good place to be in for trucking for new for new guys that are kind of done with with trucking well trucking is not like it was you know and once you're into trucking what i've noticed out of experience and out of talking to a lot of people and a lot of guys once you're in trucking you're in it for life you know it's hard to find uh, a person that was that was once a truck driver and now he owns a shop for example it's very rare you know let's say 90 percent of whoever gets into the trucking industry is going to stay as a truck driver or an owner operator or, or owns his own company you know further down the line but once you're in the trucking you're most likely going to stick it you're going to stay with trucking you know would you recommend it though? Do you think it's uh, obviously we talked about it's hard to get into and there's a lear learning curve and um, but do you think is there enough? I don't know the market. Maybe you could share about how Chicago is there. Is there a lot of tr towing companies? Is it something that I don't, well, like trucking has a shortage of drivers, right? Mm -hmm. do, do you see the same thing in towing? In towing, no. So we're never short on drivers. And uh, our drivers go through a lot of training before they get onto their own and, you know, to go tow a truck because it's not like towing a trailer. It's not like hooking up to a regular trailer. Yeah. You're hooking up to an actual truck, you know, that could fall off if you don't if you have it on there. right, you know. Once you hook up to a trailer, that's it. It's locked into the fifth wheel. But with, a, with towing, Things could go wrong, you know. If it's not hooked on right, it could just roll off the back, and you know it could cause severe damage. You know, probably kill someone or yeah. you know. Um, what is uh, what is your dream truck? Volvo. Okay. Period. Yeah. Well, unless they come up, with, you know, unless they come out with these new Tesla semi trucks, I would love to That'd own be one. Interesting, yeah. Tesla but uh, <laughs> but once I got into uh, Volvo right away it was just the truck i never looked at another truck and said oh man i wish i had that truck no i already have what i want it's my dream truck you know and uh, once i got into uh, the volvo you know i've seen you know how i got the view because i'm a short guy i mentioned that you know the view less blind spots and the turning radius and it's a smooth comfort, truck yeah, comfort, comfort. Yeah. so it's like riding a mercedes yeah. so i'm like this is it I don't want no long nose Peterbilt, long nose KW. Freightliner to me, I see it as a freight shaker. You know, it's always bouncy. Nah, you're in the truck for hours. You want to be comfortable because the too much bouncing could get to you, you know. Body wise, right? Body bad. wise, you know. So I'm like, Volvo is the best. And the, the interiors, you can probably share that with me. I, you know, uh, own a few of them and the interiors just hold up so much well so much better than freightliners they, they're just Absolutely. not falling apart you know? yes uh, a lot of guys that i towed that own freightliners when they come into my truck they're like oh wow i, I can't hear nothing in here yeah it's like so quiet yeah. I'm like well it's a volvo and uh, you know i maintain a lot yeah you know everything in there is plastic it's gonna go bad 
So once something goes bad, I replace it right away. Because I deal with a lot of junk and scrap trucks, you know, I take them back and forth to the junkyard. I could take whatever I want. They're mine. You know what I'm saying? So I, like, I got a lot of Volvos that, that, you know, I buy and I take to the scrap. They're, they're going to get crushed. If I see something I could use for myself, why not? Yeah. I take it. Yeah. So, What is uh, the craziest <laughs> thing that happened to you on, our, on the road when you were saving somebody? Oh, man, I got a crazy story for you. You know, it's, it's actually the worst and craziest story it was last year last winter see i got a call from uh from a guy's dad his son broke down in a small straight truck that was too big for a regular tow truck you know the car tow trucks it was yeah. too big for that so they called me and he was 20 miles away from uh, uh st louis missouri on i-55 and it was snowing like crazy here in chicago there was like probably an inch when i left but when i got there it was about like a foot of snow, you know, and there was a lot of cars in the ditch. I seen a few spin outs in front of me, you know, I couldn't stop and help him because I'm already going to get a guy that's already stranded, you know. Yeah. So I kept going. When I got there, the guy was on a shoulder. He was an 18 year old kid, you know, a little big guy. And he was on a shoulder, broke down and every snow plow that would uh, drive by him, they would bury him in the snow. So when I got there, the snow was up to his door. He was just buried in there. And I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be some work. You know, good thing I have a shovel, but the shovel's not going to make it because the snow plows are going back and forth. You know, every time I, I move some snow, they dig, they dig the truck back in. So that was a tough one for me, but it doesn't adhere. It was the worst day of my trucking or towing career. The worst day. So I, uh, I put the, uh, the towing... Uh, arm down and I went to back into him and I kind of slid a little bit and I got stuck so I got stuck in the snow because there was so much it was so hard for me to even throw some chains and drag him out because I'm on the side of the highway you know it's so dangerous people are flying even when it's snowing any minute somebody could jackknife any minute somebody could hit me I gotta do the job as quickly as possible to get out of there so anyway I got him out of uh, the hole that he was in it took me like you know, it took me a little while, but then I couldn't take his dry shaft off because it was crazy. Every vehicle that passes by sprays me with slush, I call it, you know, snow mm, when it's yeah, mixed yeah. with water, it's the worst. And I'm getting splashed and, you know, my, my eyelids, it, it, my whole body was just white snow. So I had to take him to the first exit. So when I took the first exit so I could take his dry shaft off, you know, I got to take the dry shaft off. So I parked on the side and... I get out of the truck and I want to go get his, uh, his to start move, removing the dry shaft. And my truck is just sliding, you know, because it's a shoulder and it was just sliding. And I run back to the truck and uh, the guy that was with me, he had no emotions, zero emotions. He, he mm-hmm. wasn't like scared or anything. No, he was just chilling, <laughs> you know, and I'm surprised. Oh. I'm like, man, you know, <laughs> You're rolling who back. are you? <laughs> yeah, we're rolling back. I so I job. jump in the truck <laughs> and I'm hitting the brakes and I'm still sliding back. So I try to put it in gear. But anyway, I couldn't get it in gear because the wheels are, uh, you know. Uh, so I started, you know, uh, actually, you know, trying to straighten out. And when I got to the end of the, of the ramp, I'm like, Whew. all right, I'm safe now. So I go down and I wanted to take his dry shaft off and I slipped while I had the hammer in my hand and it, and I, when I fell, the hammer, uh, it got caught between me and the ground and it actually fractured two of my ribs and I was on the ground for at least 15 seconds with no breath. I was like laying there and I was about to faint. Like I started seeing the light, you know, I was about to faint in the last minute I caught my breath, but I couldn't breathe, you know, like, you know, just a little bit, just enough to get me back to life, you know. But then I got up and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do nothing. I, I couldn't even move. And I still didn't take the dry shaft off, you know. And I'm four hours away from my home on the side of the highway, snowing. It was just horrible. It was just a combination of messed up things that day. So anyway, I go down and at, at a certain angle, I can't move, like I can't move any more than this. Okay, I can move this hand. You know, so I took the dry shaft off. I actually took the whole thing out. I dragged it and the guy just. Didn't help you, nothing. <laughs> standing help there you. folding his hand, nothing. He had no smile, no, uh, 
no, you know, uh, no emotions. So I actually dragged the dry shaft and I asked him for help. And I thought that he couldn't hear because he wasn't even responding. So I actually dragged the dry shaft and I carried it and I had to put everything back. And then everything was settled, but it took me hours because I, I suffered from the fraction, from the fracture. So I still had four hours of drive to get home. And I told this guy that, hey, you know, I think I fractured my ribs. I, I wasn't sure that I did. I found out earlier, uh, later that day when I went to the hospital because I, I came home and it was, it was getting worse. So I told the guy, hey, you know, I think I fractured my ribs. I might need your help if you could hear me, you know, because he's, <laughs> you make that he's sitting there. <laughs> any, any he's, noise, he, anything. He's, he was an 18 year old kid, but he was sitting there like a statue. No movement. Wow. And no response, nothing. Like, not even, hi, how are you, how's your day? Nothing. You know, not like, you know, a lot of other guys, they don't really meet people. And once they see someone, you know, especially if it's a truck driver, you know, they start talking. We get into a good conversation. You know, we yeah. link up. This guy, nothing. So they, did he help you? No, absolutely not. So it gets crazier. It's, it even gets a little more disgusting. So I drove, and... uh a few areas, like a few mile markers, my truck almost jackknifed. And I'm doing 15 miles an hour on that road. And it was ice. And I'm going so slow. And then you'll see a group of vehicles in the ditch. That's where you got to be careful because that's where the ice is, you know, the black ice. And then I could feel my truck getting out of, uh, out control. of its place, yeah. out of control. And then, you know, I let off, let off the gas and I just steer. That's the best way to do. Don't hit your brakes. So... I kept doing that until I got to a safer area, and I just took off. It gets crazier. So anyway, I dropped the truck off. I actually called for help. Somebody met me, uh, met me out there, and we uh, disconnected the truck. We dropped it off. I got paid, and I jumped in my truck, and there's this bad smell. Bro, we were, it, it's four hours away, but it took me about eight hours to get back because of the weather condition, you know? Mm -hmm. I stopped at least three times to use the restroom, and the guy didn't. He didn't even move. He didn't even eat. He didn't ask to use the bathroom. Nothing. I swear to God, bro. And I didn't really think of it. I'm like, man, this probably guy's bladder could <laughs> hold a few gallons, you know? Yeah. So anyway, uh, when I got back in the truck, there was this nasty smell in the truck. And I'm like, man, is it me? And I started smelling myself because I was under yeah. the truck. Probably you was, know, you know, what happened, yeah, dog's yeah. poo or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. I probably bumped into it. Took off my shoes. I smelled it. I'm like, that's not where it's coming from. Where is this? It's a strong smell. Like, I, I can't even breathe oh, <laughs> because of my ribs. And then you got, and the then heat, you got a bad on. smell, too. And it was freezing cold. So I had to let the windows uh, down the whole time because it was really strong. So that's when it kind of clicked in my head. I'm like, what if? It's a passenger seat. So I literally went to the passenger seat and I smelled it and oh my God. I'm like, man, why didn't he just say he wants yeah. to use the bathroom? He literally did it on the seat. Oh. He, yeah. You know, good thing I had a leather cover on there. That's the good thing. You know, stuff was just, you know, sitting Soaked. there. I had to remove it. <clears throat> I even called the, you know, the detail people. They came and they're like, oh, what is that? What did you do in here? I'm like, you know, long story, just clean it up, you know? And uh, they cleaned it up and I came the next day and there was nothing. But then I went, to, uh, I went to the hospital and that's when they told me I got two fractured ribs. And I'm like, you know, this is what I did while I had my fractured ribs. I still got the job done with fractured ribs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a good one. That's one of the craziest stories. That's I got I got plenty. It, it would take me it would take me all night. Yeah. But yeah, that's one of the stories. That's and it did and it didn't even pay well. Yeah. You know, it wasn't even worth it. But I was there for him. You know, when they called, I got there, I got the job done, I went home. That's it. You're committed, so, man. You're yeah. you're committed. Yeah. I can tell. Thank you, man. Yeah. So uh, it's, a, it's a responsibility, man, being uh, behind the steering wheel and, and owning a towing company itself. It's a big responsibility. Yeah. It's, it's not easy. People might think it's easy. Oh, let's start your truck, go tow a truck. No, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it, brother. That's a, def that's a very good story, man. Mm -hmm. I, uh, a lot of hard work. I've had my um, short 
period of fixing trucks in winter laying on the side of the road or building my fleet but man nothing like you uh definitely a lot of respect for mm -hmm. the determination and the commit obviously commitment to get the job done right when you yeah. set out to do it so appreciate that so i would like you to visualize you know yourself s under a semi truck taking off a dry shaft on the side of a busy interstate while vehicles are doing 75 70 65 miles an hour two feet away from you yeah. imagine how crazy that is in a foot of snow right and sometimes. and sometimes yeah. it's ice and snow just vil visualize it you know yeah. it's crazy it's pretty dangerous tough. Yeah, you're tough down there, you see the lights coming at you you never know when it's gonna you never know oh. when when somebody's not paying attention yeah. and like i said earlier 75 percent of every vehicle that passes me is on their phone is on their phone yeah distracted distracted um tell me i mean what can we um obviously i was just gonna say you should have a youtube channel man because i would watch i wish i had the time man. thing GoPro, that you're doing yeah. just Go on. get a gopro and get it going mm -hmm. that would be interesting one time you know one of these days you could probably join me i or i would just give you one of our cameras and just hold it with us and with you and then mm -hmm. shoot some stuff and yeah yeah uh, i'm not a camera guy man i'm not a computer guy you know i hate but sitting behind a laptop or a computer i'm like ah, it's not me you know tell me do you have a website no okay I don't. where can we when can you when where and how can people find you well they could look me up online but it's not it's just a google it's just on google okay or i you know i could put my uh business card on yeah, uh, I'll, I'll put it I, I, in your description yeah or, i'll put it in the yeah. description for everybody that's interested to uh, you you know user services but definitely um even a simple instagram you know with some of the videos and pictures you have uh, be i would i would love to dig in and yeah i will actually uh, uh, i will actually look into it you know yeah so Brother, I appreciate you coming. It was fun uh, hanging out a couple hours with you here. We got the uh, video. I um, we covered a lot in the podcast, so thank you for coming. I know it's your no problem off time. I, if you got more questions, uh, you got my number. Do it again. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Hey, no problem. Thanks, Amy. You're welcome.